Hello everyone, we're going to be getting started here in just a little bit, but before we do, you know I always like to check audio and uh, visuals. So in GoToWebinar, there's like a, a little GUI, you should have access to a little questions field. For those of you who are listening, if you could just send me a little message telling me that you can hear me clearly and that you can see me clearly, that would be awesome, and then we can get this webinar started. And so... And me too. I'm yeah. also here. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you can sing a little Christmas carol and audio all good. Nobody Thank wants that. <laughs> okay, audio is good. That's good. All right. I'm going to assume that uh, um, video is good as well. So we can go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for attending our special holiday webinar featuring the new MBN integration with Houdini. My name is Katie Jo Turk. I am a senior product specialist for the company Movella, who makes the XN's motion capture suits. So Joining me on this webinar is the lovely Chris Adamson. Chris, could you say hello to our viewers and maybe give them a little update on the company? Why do, why do we have a new name? Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm Chris. I'm the senior account executive, which means I will sell you systems if you want to buy them. Uh, really, all the talent lies with Katie Jo. She's your go-to for everything. Uh, but more about Movella, there has been some questions in the market on why did XSense change their name? Well, pretty much, XSense is still a product line um, underneath the Movella, which I like to call the Movella umbrella. Um, so how it all happened was about three, four years ago, XSense was acquired by a company called MCube. MCube made accelerometers. We made really nice algorithms out of IMU sensors. We could take the data and put it on a biomechanical model or use it for like robots. Pretty much, if you've worked with our software, the software kind of looked like 2002 Word. Um, it needed some spicing up. So MCube purchased the company called Kinduct, and Kinduct did a lot of really nice looking apps for coaching kind of applications. So the professional teams can use these apps and see if their pitcher has a nice elbow or something like that. Anyways. In combining all three of these companies, we wanted to combine our name. So that is where we have Movella. And now Movella has four business verticals, entertainment, sports science, wearables, and our industrial line. Obviously, we're in the 3D character animation. And what Movella is doing is bringing meaning to movement for people. So it's move. And then the Ella is people. So that is who we are now. And in bringing meaning to movement, we're expanding our partnerships and adding Houdini plugins and all these great things. So that's why we're all here. Yeah. And Shout now I'll pretty much sit back and let Katie Jo take it away. <sighs> okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yep. Uh, so in mid-October of this year, SideFX released Houdini 19. And in their launch video, they featured KinFX that is, that is sort of being developed as this centralized animation hub. If you haven't watched the video, it's on YouTube. It's amazing and super inspiring. Um, in Houdini 19, users can stream motion capture data from MBN. You can stream data into Houdini, record that animation, edit that animation, add layers of simulation to that animation, like um, like ragdoll simulation or muscles simulation, and then you can stream that back out into third-party engines like Unreal. So we're not going to do that entire pipeline today, although that is one of my goals. I think I'm going to do um, multiple parts of a Houdini webinar, but today we're just going to keep it super simple and basic because I'm I'm learning here with you guys also. Um, huge shout out to all the side effects people who helped me. Um, thank you, Fiona and Will and Edward and Bob and Chris. You um, are wonderful, wonderful people. Okay, so in this webinar, I'm just going to show you how to stream data from MVN into Houdini, how to retarget that data onto um, just a, a basic free Mixamo rig that I downloaded. And then I'm just going to change one node in my setup so you can see how I can also retarget animation that I imported. So without further ado, let's get into it. Katie, cool. Joe, can you make me an organizer so I can see everybody's questions come in and um, I while totally you're working through? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you guys all at the end when we take questions. Let me, here we go, make organizer. There we go. And now, thank you. Sweet. 
Okay, <clears throat> so we're in MVN Animate Pro 2021.01. This is the latest version of MVN. Um, in the entertainment business vertical, we sell MVN Animate. So you need Animate Pro or a license of Animate Plus in order to stream in real time. If you are running MVN Basic, you cannot stream motion capture data in real time. I'm gonna open a file now. And I'm going to play back this file for you. I'm going to play it back at half speed because it's beautiful. I just want everybody watching to uh, to get a sense of the quality of data that you can get from our motion capture suit. So this actor, this is Steve Takanaka. Um, he, he's a stunt actor. He works with Emperor Studios. He's wearing the Lynx suit and he's wearing the Xsense gloves by Manus. So I just wanted to show everybody the, the full body mocap data with the finger data being captured simultaneously. So this is the data I'm going to stream in real time. It's already been HD reprocessed. So when it comes to streaming data out of our software, it can be um, completely live data where the performer is wearing the suit, or it can be data that's pre-recorded and HD reprocessed. That's probably the cleanest way to stream data. To confirm if this file is HD reprocessed, I can just go to File, preferences, and then I can see here process with single level and at HD quality. All right, so now let me loop play this, and I'm going to play this back at full speed because this was captured at 240 frames per second. And I want to stream the full 240. Okay, so now I'm going to go to options. I'm going to open up the network streamer. I already, I already have a stream set up. I'm just going to remove it so we can start fresh. When you open up the streamer, just press add and then click or check the box that's next to the stream name. Um, because I'm running Houdini and MVN on the same workstation, I can leave this set to local host. If Houdini was on a separate workstation, make sure the MVN and Houdini workstation are on the same network, then put the IP address of the Houdini machine here. 9763 is a port number I'm going to have to remember when I'm uh, connecting the stream in Houdini. So Maybe you guys can help me remember that number too. Down here, you don't have to change anything. Everything is pretty much already set up for Houdini or Unreal or Unity or Maya or Mobu um, if you're using versions after 2018, I believe. But um, I'm not streaming objects, but having objects checked on, it's not going to hurt anything. So everything's set up. I can close this now. And I'm going to minimize MVN, and we're going to start working in the Houdini environment. So um, I'm going to bring your eyes over here to the objects window. First thing I'm going to do is right click, go to geometry, and then choose the geometry node. I'm going to place the geometry node, double click into it. So now the objects window has become a geometry window. When setting up, all of the nodes I'm using are geometry nodes. So Next, I'm going to right click and I'm going to type FBX character import. It's highlighted. I press enter, place the node. With the node selected, I come up here to FBX file and then navigate to the character rig that I downloaded from Mixamo for free because I have a, an Adobe account. So I'm just going to choose passive marker man FBX and press accept. And then I'm going to wait for that character to load in the viewport of Houdini. Click in the viewport, press H, and now I can center him up. So I know what you're thinking. <laughs> He's an optical mocap man, but optical mocap man told me this morning that he wanted to be driven by inertial motion capture. So he wants to try a little something new today. Next in my setup, um, I want to bring your eyes here to these outputs. I'm going to right click on the first output and type bone deform. Press enter, place that node. Right click in the gray over here, start typing mocap stream. Press enter, add that node. With this node selected, I come up to mocap device. I'm not going to stream face for studio, although that's really cool. I'm going to go down to XNs and VN 9763. There's that port number that should match the port number in the network streamer, and I'm going to press connect. I want to check if my stream is coming through, so I'm just going to click on this blue flag of the mocap stream node. So there's my skeleton. I've got full body and I got fingers and everything's looking good. Sweet. 
So now I'm going to right click on the output of the mocap stream and start typing rig match pose. Select that node, place it. I'm going to break this connection by holding Y. You get these cute little scissors. I'm going to slash the connection, connect this input to the second output of the FBX character import, connect mocap stream to the second input. Then I'm going to right click on the first output and type map points. Select map points, place that node, and now for the fun part. So I'm going to click on this node, click on the blue flag. You'll notice every time I, I click on the blue flag of a node, that is what is displayed in the viewport of Houdini. I'm going to click in the viewport and press enter. And so now you're going to see two skeletons. The green skeleton is the skeleton of the character that I'm retargeting to, so my target character. And the white skeleton is the skeleton that is being streamed out of MVN. So they're a little too close together right now. I'm going to separate them so the remapping is a lot easier. So I'm just going to come over here to the Z value, change this to 0.5, and press Enter. So now when I move my camera, it's a lot easier to start remapping. The remapping process is, is really simple. You just Start with one joint, head, and look for the corresponding joint. There we go, head, neck, and neck. So this, this part might be a little bit tedious, maybe a little bit boring. So I think Chris has um, prepared some nice dad jokes for everyone listening. For real? <laughs> uh, OK. Um, do you know who invented the round table? King Arthur. Circumference. Ah. Did you like that one? Uh, I like that one. Let's, what's a witch's favorite subject? Biology. Spelling. <laughs> when do you know a dad joke's a dad joke? When a dad says it. When its punchline is apparent. Uh, wow, you're so bad at telling these jokes. Aww. All right, spine one, spine one, spine, spine, hips, hips. Left upper leg, left upper leg. You know what would be really cool, and I'm gonna talk to side effects about this, is <laughs> if the naming convention of the two skeletons is the same, I wonder if, if this process could be automated. Like, I just click on one button and all this remapping happens automatically. If, any, if anyone from side effects is watching, that would, that would be sweet. Left foot, left foot, right foot, right foot. Katie Judge, you know I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. Is that okay, because there's, there's 26 letters in my alphabet, right? Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> okay, so I think I think I've um, completed all of the remapping. Once I play back the animation, I'll be able to see if I did it correct. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do um, all of the finger joints, but I think I think you get the point. Okay, so the remapping is done. I'm going to press Escape. Come back over here to the geometry window right click on the first output and I'm going to type full body IK. Place this node. First output connects to the third input of the bone deform. And I just want to make sure I've still got I've still got data streaming. And let's just check my skeleton here. Let me disconnect reconnect. I'm so sorry. My computer is, it is not the strongest computer. Um, all right. So we've got data. So now if I did everything right, if I choose the blue flag of the bone deform, I will have animation on my mocap man. So there he is doing some sweet, sweet moves. Excellent. So at this point, once you have data streaming into Houdini, you have the option of recording um, animation in Houdini if you want to. And then with that recording, you can turn off the stream, make edits to the motion, um, add some simulation like I had mentioned earlier. Okay, so and what if, do we- And if you connected the fingers, the fingers would move, right? Yeah, exactly. The fingers would move. I will say though, with the specific rig, let me just, I want to show this to everybody. If you notice on this rig, um, his thumbs are jutting out like this. 
this is not this bind pose for the hands is not ideal for mocap data from MVN. Um, you want all of the fingers to be zeroed out, including the thumb. So you want the thumb to be totally straight, then do the remapping, then you'll have really nice finger animation. Okay, so now what do we do when we want to drive this character using imported animation versus streamed data? So I'm just gonna move this node here, hold Y down, cut this connection, right click into the gray and type FBX animation import. I'm gonna press enter, place this node, and now I'm gonna connect this output to the rest of my setup here. So same deal, I click on this node, I come up to F FBX file, and then I navigate for my animation file, that's an FBX, but I gotta make one first. So I'm gonna go into MVN, here's my file, it's already been HD reprocessed. I'm just gonna go to file, export, export file, and let's just take a look at the options here, export options. Um, this is the folder I wanna send it to. I'm not gonna change the naming convention. These are all the different file formats that you can export our data as. So you got BVH, C3D, FBX, MP4, and MVX, but I want an FBX. Um, I'm not gonna downsample this data, so I'm gonna be exporting it at 240 frames per second. Um, overwrite first frame with the T-pose. Yes, that's important. That's always checked on by default. It just makes retargeting a lot easier. And then for the FBXs, we do have ASCII and binary. So depending on the software that you're using, um, you have those two different options. Cool. So I'm just going to press export. It's going to be like, hey, that file already exists. And I'm going to be like, yep, just re-export for me so I can show all of our viewers on this webinar. I love this data. We have to bring Steve on a, on a webinar next time. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back into Houdini. That file has been exported with the FBX animation node selected. I'm gonna come up to XB, FBX file and hand take one FBX is my animation. So I'm gonna press accept. And so now um, before I play back, I notice that when I import data, the default is like 240 frames, but I have more frames than that. So let's see, this file stops at 6313. And the frame rate is also, it's not 24, it's actually 240. So I'm gonna choose 240. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna change this value to the length of my file itself, 6313. When I play back, it's gonna be super slow. So I'm just going to change this to maintain real-time playback and press close and playing back. Oh no, where's my animation? Did I mess that up? 240, maintain real-time playback, close, yes. Uh, maybe my mapping broke. Got my file, 6313. Oh dear. Let me try reloading. Uh, somebody's suggesting focus in the FBX flag. Her output is only mesh right now. 6313. What does that mean? Your output's oh, only mesh right yes. now. Well, maybe I didn't have the correct. Here we go. Wait. There we go. There we go. Or maybe not. <laughs> No, it's playing back. It's just playing back super slow. I just had the wrong node selected. I'm so sorry, everyone. Let me try this again. Real time playback. Here we go. Maintain. Boom. Woo. Nice. Sorry about that, everyone. No pressure, Katie Joe. It's it's the nerves, you know. <laughs> okay. So um we have this mocap man now animating from the file that we imported. Um, so as you're watching the animation, you might notice a little bit of bouncing on the feet, like the foot contacts aren't super solid. That's something that I'm looking into right now. Um, I think the the like the reason for that, honestly, is the joint the joints from my MBN skeleton are not one to one with the joints of my um, 
my mocap man. So um, I think in the next webinar, I'm going to try to figure out a way to to solidify those quick contacts and then show you how I did that. So I think that might be really cool. Okay, so before um, we dive into the Q and A, um, I told you this one was going to be a super simple, basic webinar. But before we dive into the Q and A, um, I just wanted to mention that at headquarters because the Movella headquarters is in the Netherlands, we're working very, very hard to release MVN 2021.2 this month. We really we really want it to, to come out this month um, as a little holiday gift for everyone because there's two new functions that are just awesome. And one of those is you now have audio cues for the calibration process. So when you're calibrating by yourself, it's a, it's a lot easier to hold the end pose and know when to walk and hold the end pose again, all that. So audio cues in the calibration, and then also the the HD reprocess the HD reprocessing is going to be 50% faster. So I'm pretty stoked about that as well. Um, and so with that, I think we can transition over to Q and A. I'm still here. There's my video. Hey. Right. Oh man, we have a lot of questions. Let's pop these questions out. So how do you fix the feet sliding? Is that think, a question? Yeah, I think you're gonna work okay. on that for the next one, right? <laughs> Here's my theory. Um, I am not too familiar with the retargeting tools in, in Houdini yet, um, but I know that this foot bouncing happens also when I stream into Unreal. And what I have seen other users do is instead of putting the body dimensions of your talent onto the MVN avatar when you're capturing data, use the body dimensions of the character rig that you're retargeting to. So I have seen that, especially if the project is real time. There's probably a much better way to go about retargeting the data, um, but I think you have to have like the sophisticated retargeting tools for like the proper um, scaling, uh, which, you know, I think Mobu and Maya have those things, but in some of these other software, um, I'm not too familiar with them yet. And a lot of people are asking when this is online because you worked through it fast, but you hit all the details. <laughs> oh, I worked. Oh, I'm sorry if I went too fast. Um, <laughs> this is this is totally going to be recorded and it's going to be available next week. Yeah, it's usually like Monday that we launch these back on our website in our webinar section. Oh yeah, um, Aaron said her output is only mesh right now. Yes, Aaron, you're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not click on the blue flag of the bone deform and that's what I should have done. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of people wanna see a webinar, a, a follow-up webinar that also includes skin and muscle. <laughs> So that, I would think that'd be pretty cool too. I think we'll be able to do that because um, I have a new friend now at SideFX, Bob. Um, I'm hoping he and I can co-host because what we wanna do, because, okay, in preparation for this webinar, sorry, you guys, I'm gonna give you a long story. In preparation for this webinar, I really wanted to get data streaming out into Unreal um, because you can download the, um, the LiveLink plugin for Houdini for free. Um, and uh, I basically imported um, well, initially I used this mocap man, but I was running into an issue where he, his hips weren't translating. And I think it's because he doesn't have a reference joint. So when I tried it on the, um, the SK mannequin, he was looking really good. He had like the proper foot contacts and he was translating properly in space. Um, but his arms are in an A pose. They're not in a T pose. So um, I, was working, I was working with my new friend, Bob, at, at Side Effects, and he and I are going to work together to, um, to, to come up with a really like user-friendly way of matching the, the bind pose for the, for the two skeletons and then getting that data out into Unreal. I think that would make for a really, uh, a really interesting webinar in the future. Cool. That was another question about Unreal, so good one. <laughs> Seems to be about it with the questions. Um, there's one question though that says, I just want to, would this process be applicable if I was to stream motion capture in real, I think it says real time. Um, yeah. yeah, so this, this setup is exactly the same. I think this is what your question is. The, 
questions field isn't opening for me. Let me see if I can expand this. Um, would this process be applicable if I was to stream motion capture in real time? Yes, the, the setup is exactly the same. So what Chris and I did on our initial practice, I was wearing the Awinda starter kit because um, we have three different suit options. There's the Awinda starter kit, which is the most affordable full body motion capture system that Mubella sells. Then you have the Awinda system, then you have the link system. So um, in the launch video that Houdini released October, I think it was October 19th or 27th, um, you see Fianna um, wearing the Awinda starter kit. So initially I wanted to wear the, the Awinda starter kit and stream that data in real time, but my computer, my little uh, Alienware that's got an Intel i7-8750, it's just not basely enough to, um, to run everything all at once. So I had to stream pre-recorded data. But um, maybe for the next webinar, I'll do it on multiple workstations. And then we can sort of talk about the network setup for that as well, because maybe that information is beneficial. Yeah. How many actors can be streamed through Houdini? Um, I think you're limited by the number of actors that you can capture in MVN. So, so in MVN, you can capture, if, you, if they're all wearing links, you can capture up to four people and stream four people simultaneously. Um, if you had, I think you could probably stream more. Well, I don't want to say that yet because I haven't tested this yet, but I think it would be interesting if I had three workstations, two of them running MVN, eight people captured simultaneously streaming into Houdini. Um, there, I don't know if I can add an additional port number to get multiple streams going into the same environment. I know I can do that in Unreal, but I don't know about Houdini. So I will ask the side effects team that. So four, <laughs> four for so, certain. Yeah, four, four, I know four for now, but. Four, but systems may hemorrhage. No, they won't. <laughs> you just gotta set up your link systems, right? Um, if we were using Motion Builder in our pipeline for live capture, how easy will the transition to move from Motion Builder to Houdini using our XN systems? Uh, well, it's a very it's a very different setup. Um, I have faith that you'll learn, but it it I mean, knowing what you know about Maya and Mobu setup versus what you saw today, I mean, they're very they're very different. So um, I think it really depends on how much time you have to, to, to learning the setup. I mean, you could do it today, right? You would just copy exactly what I did and you could get data into Houdini. But I think learning Houdini as a whole, like that, that's, um, I think that's something that takes years for people to really master. Just like anything. Just like anything. <clears throat> These questions are really good. I want to write them down. <laughs> you probably get a copy of them being the host of this webinar <laughs> true okay let's take a couple more questions i think that was i've been reading them as they come in Well then, um, if nobody has any questions, I hope you enjoyed this this very short and simple webinar. Um, it is going to be recorded. It, I'll make sure that it's up by next week. Um, actually, I'll have the recording available today. And if if you email me, I can probably send you a download link. So maybe I can put that in the... Um, I'm going to add my email address. So it's katiejoe.turk at movella.com. Send to all. Okay, so I just shared my email address. If you are interested in a recording of this webinar, email me and I'll make sure you get a copy. Cool. Cool. Then um, I guess. I guess here we can wrap it up. Thank you so much, Chris, for co-hosting with me. Thank you to all of you for, for watching this webinar. Um, stay tuned for next year when we um, when we dive into more of the, the Unreal stuff with Houdini. So 
Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.